Support for How in the Hell Did I Get Here comes from The Coloring Book Coach. Did you know it's possible to heal your heart and more through coloring and the help of The Coloring Book Coach? Find your free coloring book at thecoloringbookcoach.com. Today's episode involves the world of art. We've got a story from Carrie about her neighbor, the international art dealer, and I read you a story that I've had in my files for over 25 years from an artist who ends up working at a very strange job. You don't want to miss this. But before we get going, I want to shout out a thank you to our newest patron, Susie Taylor, for her support at buymeacoffee.com. And to remind you that if you can support the show, we really appreciate everything you do. Even a $3 cup of virtual coffee helps us a lot. You can do that at buymeacoffee.com forward slash the coloring book coach. And if you're already helping out like Susie is, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. This is Kim A. Floden, and you're listening to How in the Hell Did I Get Here? As usual, this episode includes swear words. Stay with us, people. I don't even know what to say about this crazy story. It came from a friend a long time ago, and I've been holding on to it for at least 25 years. I have no idea who the author is, but if I recall correctly, he was applying for a job at my friend's graphics company. There's no identification on the very faded facts, And when was the last time you heard the word facts, right? But I do know that this story makes anyone's life look very, very normal in comparison. So I'm going to read it to you now, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did when I first received it. It was just one of those really wacky stories that's hard to forget. I guess at the end of the day, it's truly the story of a starving artist doing what he had to do to get by. And here's the story. Let me start by saying that artist types go through some lean times and will go a long way to keep doing what they will. Jobs were hard to come by in my town because students were everywhere. I answered an ad for kitchen help thinking it was a commercial establishment at the end of a dead-end rural road next to a national park. It was kind of like the scene of deliverance, if you catch my drift. The guy I was to work for was named Ed. He lived in a trailer that had everything covered with plywood. Why, you may ask. I'll get to that. He looked like a Howard Hughes character at his worst. He weighed about 70 pounds and had long hair and fingernails. My job was to get fresh beef liver from the packing house, prepared, frozen, or even refrigerated, was not acceptable. The liver was reserved under the name Bill V for some reason. I then had to cut the liver outside of the trailer in a pan on the sidewalk with a straight razor into one-inch cubes, then go into the trailer and warm the liver, not cook, just to take the chill off it and run it through the juicer using white bounty paper towels for a filter. Then he would drink the juice. Gross. I would put the small objects into a mason jar and toss them to Ed, who never left his bed, and then go into the kitchen, and he would toss them back to me to be put into a shelf to protect them. I also had to cook ten potatoes before going home. The plywood and other actions were necessary because Ed said his sister was trying to poison him to take over the talent agency he was running from the trailer. I had to dial and hold the phone next to his ear without ever letting it touch him while he booked a few bands at various army bases. Apparently, this poison could spread, and Ed could feel it in objects like electricity and would test the objects that I bought to see if they had been contaminated. One day while driving down this same rural gravel road, I picked up Charlie, who was the guy who cut the grass in Ed's yard. Ed's sister lived in another trailer on the same property and took care of everything else. Charlie, according to Ed, had been hit by a train a long time ago and wasn't all there. In fact, it looked like someone had taken a melon baller to his forehead. I couldn't understand a single word Charlie said. He was kind of like Ernest T. with a severe speech impediment. Ed saw that I'd given Charlie a ride and informed me that Charlie was poison. And therefore, my car was now poison, and I had to swear to carry all goods that I had purchased on my lap and not let them touch the car. What I can't believe is that I did it! 
Eventually, his stove became poison, and I had to balance the potatoes on rocks to keep them from touching the stove. (laughs) After a while, Ed accused me of charging too much for the liver, and that was the beginning of bad blood between us. When I arrived there one morning, I noticed that they had put up a new fence. I also noticed that it went right across their neighbor's driveway with no gate. That noon, their neighbors also noticed it and came over with shotguns to show Ed they were seriously disappointed with the new fence and wanted it changed pronto. End of story. I quit. (laughs) Carrie and her husband, Jack, who was a retired homicide detective, lived across the hall and befriended an international art dealer. And even though Carrie was not impressed by the art he peddled, they became friends with him and his teenage daughter until the day they found out that things were not quite what they seemed. A few notes about this episode. It was recorded with four sisters, plus three of our partners, and there's a little bit of disruption by Kevin Ball. (laughs) You can hear his stories in our four-part series that ran last month. And there was a little bit of an issue with sound quality, especially from Jenny. Speaking of Jenny, the reference about licking your inner thighs is an inside joke about Jenny's cat, who seems to spend a lot of time doing just that. Also, Carrie mentions her cat, Daisy. Here's Carrie now with the story of their neighbor, the international art dealer. The guy who lived across the hall from us when we lived in Minneapolis, we're going to say his name was Dave. And he lived across the hall from us with his daughter. We're going to call her Rebecca, just so I can remember what her name was. Dave and Rebecca. <laughs> and, Dave, or we can, oh, we can call him Rave and Debecca, I suppose. Oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> No one will ever catch on. Anyway, nice guy. Seemed to have a ton of money. He bought two condos, knocked the wall out in between them, turned them into one condo. Ah, One of those people. He's this, a wildlife art dealer. So he deals in wildlife art, right? You know, pictures of deers and eagles and shit like that, which I'm a girl. No, thank you. But uh, he and Rebecca and the daughter was, she was a teenager and she was the sweetest girl. And I got to be really good friends with her and really close with her. But they (laughs) turned this into this massive palatial like condo by taking two of them and putting them together, brought over an artist from Italy named Fabio, paint a mural all across one wall of this place, right? It, it's supposed to look like some kind of Italian villa, and it was real big on the perspective, you know, the, 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 yeah, what do they call that? Into when, the distance. Yeah, what, yeah, whatever they call that, where the lines meet and off in the distance to, you know, so, and it was really pretty freaking awful. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> it, just, it wasn't awesome. good. <laughs> you know, it wasn't good. But it was it was so funny because we wound up because we were good friends with these people and so we wound up with Fabio in our life for about six months. What does um, that mean, just, Fabio, in your life? Just hanging out with Fabio, or <laughs> he, he was licking her inner thighs. I'm pretty sure that's oh what it was. <laughs> okay, Carrie, tell us more. No, no, no. Stop it, he wasn't a cat. Sorry. He was about five foot two. I suppose he could have. Well, never like mind. Like to your inner thighs. Okay. <laughs> I would have never known he was there. So. Right. Or he could have licked Jack's inner thighs. So. <laughs> okay, then. Just now we're getting even now, now we're just getting weird. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we live, yeah, we've got, we've got uh, Dave and Rebecca and um, Fabio across the hall. And this guy's working on this mural and they bring us over all the time. The whole, the whole time, you know, that they've knocked out all these walls and rearranged this whole condo and we're turning it into this palatial thing, which was weird, you know, I mean, but um, then we got Fabio doing these uh, weird Italian El Fresco thing, <laughs> murals on the walls and I mean, it was just awful. It was so bad. Yeah, so this goes on and on, and finally Fabio's done, and we have this big party where Fabio unveils the walls, which is nonsense. They've never been veiled, you know, but, I mean, he's very flamboyant and Italian and, you know, and and, uh, all this stuff. And um, Unveiled, but never veiled. I love that. Yeah. Well, and, you know, this whole time, now, you got Dave, the international wildlife art dealer, right? Now, he's, he's living a life of like an international art dealer. You know, it's very kind of 
flamboyant and 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 all over the world and all these famous artists and all this and all that and blah 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 until the day comes when he asks jack if he can borrow a thousand dollars uh-oh Hello. ding 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 <laughs> yeah and it's like, red alert red alert yeah and it's well that's weird and i think jack wound up lending him 500 and as lending or giving well I don't think lend we ever got the money back. Um, yes, but giving. the the deal was lend me five hundred dollars. I'm going to give you these the uh, uh, like three wildlife prints by these famous artists. Blah blah blah. <laughs> do, 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 nice, Kevin. you know. And they were all like I don't know eight by Kevin, eleven. Kevin, what are you or, doing? Kevin so anyway, we wind up with these hideous works of art of caribou and shit like that. <laughs> oh my god, and caribou butts. <laughs> you know, it wasn't even like caribou looking at you. It was caribou butts. Just what is going on with the neighbor? He needs money, and now Carrie and Jack are the proud owners of elk butt art. Stay with us to find out what happens next. Hey, this is Kim, also known as the Coloring Book Coach. I just wanted to pop in here and say I hope you're doing well. And also, there are some great free coloring pages for you at thecoloringbookcoach.com. And I'm here for you if you need someone to talk to. Right now, I'm offering 20-minute intuitive sessions for just $40. I have the ability to tune into you and your life and provide quick assessment and advice for whatever might be going on. Here's a testimony from a recent client who says, Kim's reading was extremely informative and on target. She knew very specific information about my situation and has provided me with clear direction about next steps to take. She was extremely professional, empathetic, and kind. I highly recommend Kim. She truly has a gift with energy. So if you're interested in giving this a try, reach out to me at thecoloringbookcoach at gmail.com and let's talk. That's thecoloringbookcoach at gmail.com. Now, back to Carrie and the rest of her story. Of caribou and shit like that. <laughs> oh my God. And caribou butts. You know, it wasn't even like caribou looking at you. It was caribou butts. Which, well, I learned later that when it comes to wildlife art, which is a thing, that pictures of butts are, are worth like a third of what oh, pictures of not butts. Well, hello. I a have, butt, it would be pretty easy to paint I have people to a that face. collect butts of animals. As you are kidding me. Nope. That's all Carrie, they have if on you there. still have them, you could probably sell this shit yeah. for more. Yeah. Oh, now they're now, the now the world's gone topsy turvy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hated these things. Just hated them because. I'm sorry, it's wildlife art, and I didn't think they were that yeah. good. Yeah. But we wind up with them hanging in a hallway because Jack liked them. So time passes. We're friends with these people. They're they're fun. They're they're friends with our neighbors too. Everybody, it's all fun. And I really liked Rebecca, his daughter. She was a lonely girl. You know, she's only like 15. And Daisy liked her. Daisy hated everybody, but she liked Rebecca. But one day I get home from work, and Jack's like. Well, the FBI came to see me today. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you think, oh, my God, it's the HOA people? Yeah, yeah, I should have, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the, I mean, the first thing I thought was, well, it must be some old case of his. You know, they must, it, uh, you know, some old homicide case or something that they wanted to, you know, talk about. No, they want to talk about the neighbor across the hall, the international wildlife art dealer. Hmm, dun, dun, dun. Because he's not an international wildlife art dealer. He's an international art smuggler. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. Now and involved in a bunch of different rackets all over the country. And this guy's up to his eyeballs in in the dirty world of art. Ooh. Trading and dealing and thief, stealing. You know, you know how you all hear those stories about how rich people buy famous art and then hide it away in a yeah. Den, yeah. Den or, yeah. or, or the Thomas Crown affair. Ex right. That movie. You know, <laughs> yeah. Now he's not an art thief, but he's involved in this process along the way of getting this. Yeah. Art. He's like the fence or something. Yeah. He's, he's, and he's uh. smuggling art all over the world and all this. We had no idea. Well, how would you? You, know? you just got a couple <laughs> elk butts hanging on your wall. I know. Oh, <laughs> Do you think so anything bad. big's going you on? Know? Were they paintings or photograph or photographer, painter? Or paintings. Like? Paintings, yeah. Wildlife paintings. Oh, and um, 
I mean, that's what we knew, you know, that he dealt in. What what was actually being smuggled, I really don't know for sure. So were any of his pieces of art that Jack got, were there any of those like? No, oh. no. In fact, they weren't even that valuable. I mean, I, I looked into it after the fact and. They were asses. One of them was some kind of, actually just a, pr a promotional piece for Rapala fishing lures. It wasn't really worth <laughs> a whole lot. It was like, lure it was a bar sign. You know, yeah, but no, I mean, it was a real piece of art that they made, they made these limited edition things for, I don't know, people who are insane and wanted <laughs> Rapala art. Carrie, right. Carrie Redland fans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, no, fans yeah. of fishing lures. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, but, there's um, such a huge market for those. The other two were by the same artist, and that was the one of them was the caribou butts, and the other one was some kind of caribou. They, they were almost like watercolor. And they were worth like a grand a piece. So they weren't, hmm. Oh, that's pretty good. you know, yeah, they weren't, they weren't phony baloney, but God, they were horrible, hideous. Well, what'd you do stuff. with them? Well, what, at, what happened to the artwork was the feds took it. a cup. No, no, they weren't interested. No, that they were like, that's <laughs> Even just, they thought it was that's, ugly. That's art. Yeah. You're stuck with that. You know, good luck to you. We donated them um, a few years after that. And this is the story takes a bit of a sad turn. I was working at an Irish bar called McMahon's pub and I actually wasn't working there anymore, but I was, a, I had a ton of friends that worked there and people lived above this place and it burned to the ground and people oh, died. Oh, wow. Oh, Ooh. wow. And Ooh. Um, Ooh. yeah, it's so we had a big fundraiser thing and we donated those caribou oh, butts get, and all yeah. that yeah to to the uh, auction that, that yeah. they had you know god bless jack i mean he he would always if there was any cause at all you know he would he would donate anything he owned and um i was able to say how about those pictures yeah, <laughs> yeah. well played yeah well played. <laughs> from the international art uh yeah. smuggler well, who lived i mean they the were hall. you know they they were real art yeah. they were just fucking ugly <laughs> no, <laughs> right. Not your thing. unless you're into um, elk ass two days after the fbi showed up at our door the art smuggler slash dealer across the hall announced to us that he and his daughter were moving to florida dun 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 now they're Did your they next door neighbors now <laughs> dun 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 and within two more days they were gone oh ah. i bet gone they, didn't really they bugged car. out on that condo turns out he owned he owed a shitload of money on the condo he didn't even own the condo bugged out on the condo left it i mean what they had done to it made it almost worthless for anyone else Ew. You know, where was fabian fabio had gone back or to fabio italy. he was back <laughs> okay. in italy selling his bullshit <laughs> mirrors that will make your life shine to other people yeah rebecca and Dave, gone disappeared and wow. I, I feel so bad for for his girl, 16 daughter. year old daughter yeah because obviously this was not for a sure good they year. did not go to florida she sent me one letter and they were somewhere in florida but i don't I think they stayed in well, florida probably... we heard from the fbi a few more times they were on the lam the fbi couldn't find them but they were still looking for them you could probably double the value of those paintings if you add that story to it Right, but yeah, they don't have them anymore. Unfortunately, we donated them. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you're right, though, Kevin. It's the story, not the painting. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I'd have known that people nowadays were collecting paintings of caribou butts, you know, I, I would have kept them. We hope you enjoyed this week's show, and I just want to take a minute here to say that with all that's going on in the world and our country, be sure to take some time out and connect with the people you love. Things are moving fast, and as we've seen, life can change very quickly. So please remember to be there for the people you love and who love you. Meet you back here next week for more How in the Hell Did I Get Here stories. Until then, pay attention, my friends. You just never know when you might find yourself saying, It was kind of like the scene of deliverance, if you catch my drift. The guy I was to work for was named Ed. How in the hell did I get here? One more thing. Please help us grow the show by sharing it with your friends. That would be awesome, and it really does help. So please, if you can, please do. And remember to visit thecoloringbookcoach.com for your free coloring book, plus color and calm pages designed for what we're living through right now. Also, we hope that you're listening to the How to Fall in Love with Yourself Toolkit 
which is your guide for the month ahead, plus the tools you need to get through it. Subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast. Big thanks to Silent Partner for our theme song, Seventh Floor Tango, and ad music, Blue Skies. We found them on YouTube's Creator Library, and you can find the links in our show notes. How in the Hell Did I Get Here is a production of The Coloring Book Coach and is written, produced, and hosted by myself, Kim A. Floden, with editing direction from Carrie Floden.